Hey guys, welcome back to my final video of 2018. Today, we're rounding off my first year doing YouTube full-time in the only way that you'd expect, by talking about the Flood. It just seems too fitting. In this video, I want to talk about the hypothetical situation in which the Flood are victorious and manage to infect or consume almost every living being in the galaxy. What happens to the Flood after? What happens if they infect other galaxies? Today, I'm going to do my best to answer all of these questions based on what we know. Also, make sure you stick around to the end of the video for just a sort of personal thank you from me for such a damn good year. Okay, so let's start off by looking at how the Flood spread, because this may actually hold the key to understanding what happens if they win. As the Flood outbreak spreads, as well as infecting living creatures, it also collects their biomass to assemble a grave mind. The further the Flood spreads, the more biomass, and also consequently intelligence, is fed to the grave mind, which allows it and also the Flood outbreak to evolve through a series of four stages. The first three stages, the Feral, the Coordinated, and also the the interstellar stages are the only ones that we've seen in the games. Now, to understand the Flood, let me just give you guys a very quick rundown on these stages. So, the first one, the Feral stage, occurred during Combat Evolved, and covers the initial outbreak and the formation of a Proto-Grave Mind. It then moves on to the second stage, the Coordinated stage, which occurred during Halo 2 and begins roughly around the time that a Proto-Grave Mind acquires enough biomass and also intelligence to evolve into a Grave Mind. This stage of evolution allows the Flood to create hives, which release large amounts of spores into the air, which essentially turns the Flood infection airborne. And then the third stage is the interstellar stage, the stage in which the Flood gain access to interstellar travel. This occurred towards the end of Halo 3, and if the Flood ever happened to get to this stage, then it means a galactic apocalypse is dangerously close. Not only can they now travel between star systems, but they're also capable of using the Logic Plague, the informational version of the Flood infection to infect non-biological entities. They can also spread this plague over data networks as well, which technically could make the use of radios and network-based communication methods extremely dangerous for humans, and also for AIs too. And then we have the fourth stage, so significant and galaxy-shattering that it's only ever really been hypothesized about. This is the transgalactic stage, a stage that can only occur once an entire galaxy has been consumed. What happens is, essentially, all of the separate flood outbreaks across the galaxy sort of sweep through all of the planets in said galaxy until they reach its centre, which helps them ensure that no planet has gone uninfected. And when they reach the centre, all of these outbreaks sort of coalesce and merge together to become one ultra-sized, hyper-intelligent outbreak. At this point, about 99.99999% recurring of all living species in the galaxy have been infected by the Flood, and the galaxy-wide parasitic apocalypse is in full effect. The Flood have officially won. So, what happens next? Well, it depends on the state of other galaxies and also, in the long term, the state of the universe. If this galaxy, let's just use the Milky Way galaxy for example, that's been entirely infected is the only galaxy to be entirely infected, then the Flood can then begin to spread to other galaxies to continue to consume and grow, hence the name Transgalactic. In the Milky Way, they've essentially reached their critical mass. There's no more biomass or information to be consumed that could help them expand. They have to move elsewhere to do so. Now, it's been hypothesized that this happened prior to the Foreign Flood War. The precursor to this universe-altering conflict was the Human Foreign War, a war that was sparked by a major misunderstanding. For no visible reason to them, the ancient humans had suddenly begun invading foreigner-controlled space at an aggressive pace. Of course, the foreigners weren't having any of it, and they took this opportunity to flex the mantle that they believed they so rightly deserved, and they put the humans in their place by essentially wiping them out. However, it later turned out that the humans hadn't been invading, they'd been running. 
from the flood. The parasite was spreading at an alarming rate through human controlled space, and they were fleeing to safety to survive. However, as a possible contingency plan, human scientists had genetically altered a third of their population, believing these gene modifications would destroy the flood biomass and essentially defeat them. When they sacrificed these test subjects to the flood, the flood actually began to retreat before eventually vanishing entirely. They believed that they'd beaten the flood. Or so they thought. 10,000 years later, the flood reappeared in foreigner space, stronger and bigger than ever before. And thus, it was believed that when they were defeated, they in fact purposely retreated to both create a false sense of security, and also to gather the strength and intelligence of other galaxies before one final assault on the foreigners. And the rest is very violent, bloody history, but what happens to the galaxies that the Flood depart? Well, the infection definitely doesn't just fade away. I imagine that most, if not all, of the key mines will remain there, attached to the planets they've been grown on. It's also safe to assume that Flood hives continue to fill the atmosphere with spores, ensuring that the air on all of the planets in said galaxy remains unbreathable, and that any attempt from the few survivors out there to cleanse the parasite is thwarted. I imagine as well that some combat forms and pure forms likely stick around too for similar reasons, but the main body of the outbreak and the force will depart on flood controlled ships. Computer systems, AIs and data networks will also remain compromised too thanks to the key mines, so all in all, this parasite ain't going nowhere. Well, despite actually going somewhere. Okay, but what if the Milky Way is the last galaxy to be infected? What if literally every single other galaxy in existence has already fallen to the parasite? Well, then based on what we already know about their stages of evolution, we can hypothesize that they try and reach a fifth stage where they'd attempt to travel to other universes. That said though, to do that, it'd require the species in one of the galaxies they infected to have had sufficient knowledge to do so. Because all of the Flood's intelligence comes from the species they consume, if no species had gotten that far yet technologically, then we can assume that the Flood almost hit an evolutionary dead end and are trapped in this universe. The only way that I could see them finding the intelligence to escape is if maybe a species from another universe enters ours and is then infected by the Flood, but the chance of that happening is like so low that it's really not worth considering, in my opinion at least. Because this is so unlikely to occur, it's likely that the Flood will just continue to exist as is. As far as we know, combat forms and the like don't exactly go dormant, like for example the zombies at the end of 28 Days Later, because they aren't even remotely human anymore. They don't require nutrients or nourishment to survive. The same goes for grave mines and key mines and everything in between too. The universe would realistically just remain a massive parasitic death trap to any species unfortunate enough to stumble upon it. And that's what would happen if the Flood were ever to be successful, at least in my opinion. Like I said at the start, a lot of this is hypothetical, it's definitely not canon, but I try to keep it as realistic and as close to canon as possible based on what we already know about how the Flood spread, how they evolve, what their life cycle's like, etc, etc. So this is, in my opinion, as close to canon as we're going to get until we actually get canon. That said though, if you think that the end result would be any different to what I said in this video, then let me hear it down in the comments. I'm more than open to having my mind changed. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a bunch of ideas for today's video, but honestly, given everything, I figured that a flood video was just hands down the most fitting for my final video of the year. Before I go though, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of the support this year, guys. Honestly, 2018 has hands down been my best year on this planet in the 22 that I've had so far. YouTube became my full-time job, which is something that was never even a pipe dream because it just felt so far-fetched. And then we also went and blew through two massive milestones, not just 100k subs, but 200k as well. And we're also fast on our way to 300k, which is just mental. I also got to go to the US twice, both times because of YouTube and Halo. The first to go to a Halo MLG event, which for me personally is a huge deal. It's something that I never thought in a million years would happen, honestly, ever, and it has done because of YouTube and Halo. And also to go back to PAX to meet all my epic internet gamer friends, and also to visit V43 again. I also got the chance to meet so many of you guys in person, and just say hi and talk about Halo, which 
honestly will never not be insanely surreal for me and also i got the chance to become friends with like people that i've idolized on youtube for years which uh, as well will never not be surreal it's a crazy world honestly we also finally got a look at halo 6 which my god that did not disappoint in any way shape or form and let's be honest guys we had waited a long time for that trailer i i think it's safe to say that we deserved it it also feels great now as well because to me at least it sort of feels like the gears have started to turn recently in terms of infinite so i have a feeling that 2019 is gonna be a pretty fucking good year for all of us and for Halo as a whole. I cannot wait. So I want to say one final thank you to Jamie Frischman, Lapis, and everybody else for the support this year over on Patreon. You guys have really helped make this YouTube gig of mine possible, so thank you guys so much, and thank you all so much for watching, guys. I hope you all have a great last few days of 2018, and I'll catch you all in 2019.